welcome back. In this video tutorial, we are going to see how to download SHIPS rainfall data using Google Earth Engine. So what is SHIPS stands for? Climate Hazard Group Infrared Precipitation with Station Data. It is a gridded precipitation data set that combines satellite imagery, institute data station data, and climate data to provide a higher resolution rainfall estimates. Uh, let us have a look at the features of this data sets. So you can see here the source is Climate Hazard Center, UC Santa Barbara, and the temporal coverage is from the year 1981 to present, that is 2025. And the temporal resolution is, it is uh, available in daily, uh, five days once, and monthly. The spatial resolution is 0 0.05 degrees, that is five kilometer. Each pixel is covered five kilometers. And you can see its coverage 50 degree from uh, 50 degree south to 50 degree north. So the input data data sets for creating the rainfall uh, rainfall data sets are satellites, IR data, then uh, station data, that is ground station data, then chips, satellite only baseline data. And you can see the updated frequency is uh, near real time with few days lag and access is just publicly available. You can download it from uh, various websites. So one of this is the Google Earth Engine. So how the chips works, it blends the infrared satellite imagery, detects the cloud top temperatures, followed by that is the climatology, long-term historical rainfall patterns, and after that, the rain gauge observation from global stations. This fusion provides both spatial consistency via satellite and accuracy via gauges. And you can see the Google uh, data sets asset you can use this and you can see each image as a single band and the precipitation is given in millimeters per day and you can use some of these functions some mean maximum medium reduce so if we just have a look at this comparison types of chips climatic data daily versus pentad so daily is available per day per day and you can see pentad is for five days and the images available is 365 per year and 73 per year here. Here the file size is larger, here it's smaller. It's a detail level is high temporal detail. Here it is smooth and less noisy. Ideal for event detection, rainfall peaks. This can be used for rainfall trends or drought analysis. So you can use it based on your need accordingly. So now let us go back to the Google Earth engine. So the first step is we are going to define our study area. So let us zoom into a particular location in Africa, Kenya. So this is the area of interest for me. And let me use this draw rectangular option. Let me draw a box like this. Once fixing, fixing the box, let me click exit. So this is our area of interest, as you can see here. Now, you can see after uh, drawing this at the top, you can find import. Import is this geometry, that is the polygon over here. So here, in the define your area of interest, I'm going to give, give this a name, geometry. So what I've done is I've just inputted my study area. Geometry is the name, as you can see here. This is the geometry file that I am calling here. Next is we are going to define the date for the data sets. For example, we want to download it for the year 2024 for a single year. So I've just uh, chosen the start year and the end year. You can see from January to December. Now after setting it, you can see load our chips data. We can load the chips data. For example, you can just type in chips and hit the button search. So here you can find two types of data. One is daily and one is contact. So here we are going to use that daily. So if you just click on it, we can find more information about the data sets, the bands, maximum values, citations, right? You can just copy, it, close it. Now you can just paste it over here. So this is the 
Chips daily data set that we are importing. I'm just uh, giving a name for it, variable is chips 2024, and we just need to uh, give the resource link to it. So after that, you can see here I have just used the filter date. So I have given the start date and end date that you can just uh, tell the start date and end date. So we already specified it here. So I'm just calling it here. And after that, just we are going to filter it by the boundary. So I'm using geometry. So geometry is nothing but this boundary, right? Okay. Now if you just come down, you can see calculate the annual rainfall. So we are going to just get the annual rainfall of this region. So I'm defining a variable annual rainfall is equal to chips 2024 sum. So sum of rainfall in 2024 and followed by that we are using this clip by geometry so it will be the data will be once again clipped over here based on our study area so that is why this being you can see i have mentioned geometry here also next is the visualization parameter with attractive uh, color schemes so i'll just customize some given some colors over here even customize it so after that, I have defined another variable. So here we are going to define the visualization parameters. So the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is three, uh, 2000. You can customize the maximum value, right? And after that, you can see next is we are going to display the map over here. So I have used this function map the center object. So the map will be centered based on the geometry. That is this study area boundary. And after that, you can see followed it by the zoom level. I have set the zoom level to eight. You can reduce it or uh, increase it accordingly. Followed by that, we are going to add the annual rainfall map, which we have chosen. So we are going to add this annual rainfall, as you can see here, which we have calculated. And followed by the visualization parameters. And we are going to give a name for it. In the layers here it will be coming up annual rainfall 2024 you can also customize this name you can keep any name to it give any name to it and finally we are going to export it to google drive so export dot image to drive this is a function so in image we are going to export the that we have already defined at the top annual rainfall right that is the image and description is we can customize the description you can give any name to it and next is you can see the folder file name. You can also create a folder called as Earth Engine. And the file name prefix, you can choose annual rainfall 2024. Followed by the region. So the study area, geometry type. This is the region. And scale is 5000. As this is the this is in meters because the uh, resolution of the data is data set is 5 kilometers. So it is 5000, that is meters. And finally, the file format GeoTip. Now let us run the code. After running the script, let us wait for the result to be coming up. So you can just see here, the result has come up. And let me hide this. And you can see the rainfall map which we have derived. You can inspect it using the inspector tool. And you can see the spatial variance of the rainfall. For example, if you click on here, you can see the precipitation, annual precipitation of this region that is around 386 millimeters. And if you just click on this uh, pilot part, so this is this is the region that the rainfall is uh, very heavy, that is 2059 millimeters annually. So likewise, you can inspect it, inspect the result. And if you want to, for example, if you just interested uh, monthly, if you want to get it monthly, you can also get it month-wise. For example, if I required for the year, uh, for the month, October, to November month of the same year 2024, 
I can just specify the date here. And after that, I can run the script. You'll be seeing the difference here. So in this two months, the received rainfall will be shown here. Like this, you can see. You can also inspect it. So in the two months, from October to November, this much of rainfall is being received in this region. That you can get. You can get it for a month, a single month also. If the rainfall is there, the data will be available. If it isn't there, it won't be. It will be just uh, like a white, white raster. So yeah. Now let us just download it for the entire year. And if you want, you can also change the colors from here also, from here also, from the layers list. Click on it. And here you can click on these, each of these, and you can change it to any color, you can change it. Likewise, you can customize for each of the squares from uh, low to high. Now let us see the task for session. We can export it. So click on run to export to Google Drive. So you can see here, we have already uh, told the told here to create a folder called as app widget. So that's why it is showing up like that. You don't have to uh, create a folder separately; it will be automatically done. You can just customize the name if you want. Now click on run. Now the export process has been started. Let us wait for it to be completed. So once it is done, you can just click and open it in the drive. Now you can see here, inside the Google Drive, it is in Earth Engine. You can download this file. So the file is downloaded. This is around 561 KB. Now let us add it to the GIS, add data. Close over the file and let us add it. Let me change the color scheme for this. So I'm going to choose this color scheme, high and low, you can see here. Now we can just have a look at the image. You can also make it a bit, because you can see here, it is a bit pixelated. So the display option, let me change it to bilinear interpolation. Now the image is somewhat smoother. So like this, you can download a data set, the climate data set from the Google Earth engine, ships rainfall data. Thanks for watching. If you have any other doubts with this, you can ask in the comment section. And please do, uh, please do like and subscribe to the channel. If you found this video useful, please do comment on it. Thank you.